Good afternoon all. It's morning in my time, but when you see this video, it will be half past four. I have a jam-packed day with meetings, and this is the reason why we are pre-recording this video. The reason for today's demo is to give inspiration on your flower pots. It's nearly September 2020. We can feel the changing climate. We all want to burst outside, spend time in our gardens, and now is the perfect time to start to beautify things outside your house. Seeing that there's nothing left, um, in my case, to beautify inside anymore. Literally, every wall in my house has been painted. Yesterday, I saw Salmarie in Portugal, and she said, Nadine, I really think everything in your house has been chocolate. Seeing that you are starting painting your dust bits. This is really the case. But it's time, spring is almost here, so be inspired. I'm going to share some creative ideas. Dennis will also be jo joining us later. I hope he remembers to come. Good to give some tips and advice on how to waterproof your pots and also how to treat it if it's very dusty, flaky, um, if it's raw cement garden pots, flower pots. How to pre-treat it before you start painting. Now, if there is already paint on your flower pots, first very important tip is to make sure that all the paint is in good condition before you start applying a next coat of paint or changing the color. If some paint pots are chipping, it's important to first remove that and make sure that whatever is underneath is solid, that it's not flaky cement. Dennis will tell us how to treat that, it's important. And then also to waterproof your pots on the inside to make sure that you don't get water problems. Sometimes you see it, it looks like white streaky marks on the outside of your garden pots and also bubbles that appear on the outside after you've painted them. So Dennis will explain to us how to treat that and to prevent that. From my side, I'm going to share creative ideas. Um, Shaul, you're at the factory. We're in the factory. Shaul, if you're looking. Shaul is a student that's assisting Danny Howell with barcodes and with ribbon. It's all he's doing the entire day. The poor guy. I think he's so relieved if we ask him to purchase flower pots and that's what he assisted with yesterday. So this is what the flower pots look like that he has purchased. So they're not flaky, they're not um, dusty, but they're dirty. So what I'm going to do, first important step on most surfaces with chalk or wear gloves, wear a mask, make sure you work in a well-ventilated space. Sorry, I've just barged in at the factory and um, I want to share all these ideas with you. So I'm going to pour some thinners on my cloth, but I'm going to ensure that the thinners do not reach my skin. Okay, and I'm properly going to clean my pots. If there are dustiness, flakiness, a different preparation will be required. And that's why thinners will be joining us later. So a proper clean is always important. Okay, thinners for me so aside. Tinas is the sales manager on the Paint Master side. Um, so Paint Master is our mother company, and Paint Master is the company that manufactures Choco. And he's not only our um, that's why I can stand so close to him without wearing a mask. He's also my very naughty brother. <laughs> um, even though he is an adult now, um, I won't say anything anything more. This is Tinas, my brother. I love him to bits. Tinas explain to us, if you have a garden pot, flower mm -hmm. pot, that's very dusty, flaky mm -hmm. on the outside, raw cement, yes. how do you pre-treat it before you start painting? Okay, so first you've got to start sanding it, so, so you can get all the loose particles off. Do you have some sandpaper here? Yeah. Okay, that one I've just cleaned with thinners. Maybe you should demonstrate on this okay. one. So that one is ready. After thinners, we allow 20 to 40 minutes dry time. Thinners, will you be able to sand like this? Yeah. Okay, just hold on that. Okay. So sand. So first we're going to get off all the loose particles. Yeah. Okay, so when you get 
off all the loose particles. You're going to clean it nicely with the, with the cloth. This okay. is now for those really dusty, flaky um, cement garden pots that you can buy somewhere. Yes. Or even if you have garden pots already in your garden 100%. that's flaky and you want to change it, you don't want the cement loop in your garden. 100%. Anymore. So what you're going to do then is you're going to sand it off nicely. Yeah. Then you're going to clean it. Then you're going to put on a bonding liquid. Now that's an oil-based bonding liquid. You get two types of bonding liquids. You get a water-based bonding liquid. A water-based bonding liquid will never work, okay? Uh, because it's actually latex and you need to add cement to your product. So the, the only thing that will stick to this is an oil-based bonding liquid because that will penetrate through these areas, okay? Then you're gonna need to wait for one day before you can paint over this because your bonding liquid is an oil-based product and a well based product you need to wait 24 hours before you can overpaint uh, to, to do another coat. Okay. okay. So first you're going to do bonding liquid outside and inside. Wait for a day. When you're done with that, we're going to inside we're going to put on our umbrella. Now that's our waterproofing product with a built-in membrane. Okay. So inside umbrella from Paintmaster available on the Paintmaster website or from your nearest Paintmaster stockist. Okay, Perfect. so bonding liquid, paint master, umbrella, paint master. Perfect, so you're going to do inside and outside with your bonding liquid. Wait for a day. Wait for a day. Yeah. Then on the inside, you're going to do up to, work on three coat system. Okay, so umbrella, you're going to paint in the inside with the umbrella, three coats. How long do you wait in between Between coats? four and six hours. Okay. okay, always with the water base, you need to wait between four and six Is hours. Is the umbrella also oil based? No, it's a water based product. Okay. So the umbrella is a water-based product, so that you, then you're going to wait between four and six hours before you overcoat. So you, then you're going to do three coats inside because you, that you, will help. With each coat, do you do you do, do you do it in the same direction, or do you need to do one coat um, horizontally at the next coat vertically, or does it yes, matter? Yes, you can because then it forms another mesh. Okay. So with the with the umbrella with the built-in membrane. Then it forms another mesh. So if you're going to do vertical or horizontal and vertical again, okay. it's going to form a nice mesh. Okay. And then it will help you so that the water can't penetrate through this, so that you don't have stuff peeling off. Okay. okay. And all those bubbles that sometimes appear on the outside of our So pockets. then the last thing that you can do then, then you wait for that to dry, and then you take your chalk or paint, you paint it on the outside, mm -hmm. two coat system, mm -hmm. like you normally do with your chalk or, yeah. and then do your glaze. Perfect. Thank you. Pleasure. Mwah, I love you, Tina. Thank you for the help. Pleasure. Okay, so that was Tina's, and we also have a new addition to the family. Um, he is a month old, and he is also a Tina, so they just had a little baby boy in COVID times. The most beautiful baby Tina you have ever seen. Um, okay, so now you know how to pre treat flaking um, dustiness, and I'm going to give the creative inspiration. Remember, what I say is not law, it's inspiration. So see this as inspiration to beautify your own pots. The first thing I'm going to start off with is masking tape, just for some ideas. So Tinas now has cleaned the pot, he has applied the bonding liquid, just pretend, pretend, and we've given it a day to rest. And now in this spot, we are going to be creative. So I'm going to take some masking tape. Yesterday, we were in Potchefstroom um, for a charity event to raise funds for paws, the, the Potchefstroom Animal Welfare Society. It was lovely, it was with Liz Mayron, a lot of creativity. And those videos are available on our Facebook page and Choco Paint YouTube channel. So what I'm doing now is I am simply using the masking tape. And I mask off a section so that I can give some creativity to my pot. And I'm going to use the color. So here I have a color palette. Let's go through my color palette. Let's be colorful outside. I think sometimes inside, indoors, you might be wary of playing around with color. 
But ladies and gents, when you are outside, it's flowers, it's spring. Um, let's see it as a token of new hope. Let's be colorful outside. I'm using Jane's Jade, matte black, almonds aubergine, holidays coral, and I just love Aschat and Aschat. Okay, so remember the names of our paints are named after people, except for Aschat, it's named after a dog. Okay. Now, we are going to apply a coat of almonds aubergine and something exciting, all the stuff is you will receive an emailer um, before the end of the week. Choco has Choco branded brushes. How beautiful. Thank you, Hamiltons. This is done in collaboration with Hamiltons. How beautiful. And I'm going to use the color almonds aubergine. Now, for those um, stockers, that receive parcels, for those of you who have ordered online, and you see the um, palette wrap around your boxes. This is done by Armon, and this is his cup. So first of all, you're going to shake your choco jar, dip a clean, dry brush in your paint. The, the um, crop that I've just cleaned with thinners, you are just going to paint onto that, but I have something different in store for them. And now I make sure that my masking tape sits nice and flat on the surface. If paint leaks underneath, it will be caused, it, um, the reason for that will be due to the grooves on your garden pot, or maybe where the masking tape didn't adhere to properly. Then you can just take a blade and even that out afterwards. If you are a um, perfectionist, I am. And I'm going to paint with almonds aubergine on this side. How beautiful is this color? Now important when painting garden pots, flower pots, is to also paint the top section and then also an, a section on the inside. The reason for this is you don't want water to sit on your pot, you want to create a barrier. And we will also glaze these sections. Now why glaze? Choco has a built-in sealant, but what the glaze does, it creates a water-based protection, a, a, a water-resistant protection on your surface and also UV. So for pots standing outside in sun and rain, what I do with my flower pots, which have been painted in Danny's day, most of them, and tones of greys and yellows, I applied three coats of the glaze, and I'll show you later how to dilute them. Three coats of glaze, half an hour apart with a damp cloth. Okay, so that section, I'm painting armor, and let's be creative and, I'm going to do the bottom section in matte black. You will apply two coats. I'm not going to do it now, else we'll have to wait for um, the paint coats to dry. This will take too long, but you will get the idea. So how long do we wait in between coats? Make sure when you paint, to not, not to paint in direct sunlight. So you paint in shade. You allow for the paint to dry 20 to 40 minutes, depending on your climate and weather and then only you apply the second coat and Danny now I need to see where the masking tape got joined okay there it is so I'll only remove the masking tape once I have applied my second coat okay I'm just going to miss that step
We are in the factory, so you will hear background noises and sounds. And there we have a very colorful, although there's black, black in the garden with greens, just pop. Okay, so we have some color, some black, and what the black will do, due to the dark tone, it will just blend in with different colors. So this is a safe, safe tip. Or you can just be creative and play with color. So there we've painted with Ashat. Here is Amon and Matte Black. Easy way to create a two-tone on your pots. Once that has been, um, that has dried, I'll allow four hours before I apply my clear glaze. Now on this pot, where it has been painted, with a, um, I just want to remove my finger marks, where it has been painted, with Ashat already and it has tried. And due to the crevices, I'm going to show two, two ideas, two um, inspirational techniques that you can use. The one is sanding. So on the crevices, I'm using a 100 grit piece of sandpaper and I'm sanding to emphasize the detail on the pot. Okay, so you can sand as much as you want, but look at the difference. It doesn't look like a paint, plain painted pot. There's some detail on it. Or you can do a dry brush technique. So I'm going to use a dry brush I'm going to use the color, let's do Dawn's Wash, dip my paintbrush only the edges of the bristles, the bristles in the Dawn's Wash, and I also remove excess. I have a piece of cardboard here, so I make it as dry as possible, and this is also why the technique is called dry brush. So I have very dry bristles, just make sure on the edges that you remove excess paint there as well, because that's where the paint loves to sit. Dry brush, little paint, and this can work on a flat surface or even something with detail like this pot. Let me just dry it. This is the thinnest cloth. That's not a good idea to dry it with the thinnest cloth. Just take a minute. I take my brush and what I do is I just touch the edges with that. And there again, I have something different. And if you are a colorful person and this is outside, we're not allowed to be scared when working outside. We can be colorful people. Maybe take your almonds or bergine on top of your ice hut and your dance wash and your dry brush with that as well. Look how stunning this is. So your pots with crevices, if you don't have detail on your pots, you can always stencil with a stencil of Paris paste some detail on, which I'll show soon. How beautiful is that? Danny is the video girl, Danny, this morning. This is a lot of morning. Okay, so there, is two pieces of inspiration. Now for the third one. We are going, um, before I show you the third one, I wanna show you what I've done here. So here, we've also worked with some July. This is our July color, and this is matte black. And we created a geographic um, pattern on this. So, very important, before you stick masking tape on a previously painted surface, make sure you allow that surface to dry and cure overnight. Else, the masking tape will remove the surface, or if you haven't cleaned properly your surface with lacquer thinners or the bonding liquid, before you started bonding, liquid is required if it's flaking, dusty. In other instances, like this one, there was no flakiness, 
We cleaned with the lacquer thinners, allowed 40 minutes drying time, painted it one color. So we applied masking tape there, painted the entire pot in either matte black or July, and then just afterwards, masked a section off and painted the second coat. But that masking off and painting the second coat and second color only happened on day two to allow the paint to cure and dry properly. On this pot, and I'm just going to remove this, if you will just allow me a moment. I don't, um, okay, so there is dry brush, there's masking tape. Um, oh, I have a lovely idea that I want to share next. On this pot, this is something that we purchased yesterday. Danny had to run around um, from Mr. Price, but just to show you if you have square pots in your garden, what the possibilities are. So on this one, it's also a square shape. We have applied some lines, like I've shown previously. So you can stick your mask inside there, stick it there. We faint it there with Olivia's pale and with just red. And then we mix some matte black into our stencil of Paris space. I'm going to show that now. But look how beautiful and different this is. We will definitely seal it then with a coat of clear glaze, three coats of clear glaze. And I'll also show that later. But to show the mixing into our stencil of Paris space. Now just let me get, okay, there's the scrape already in there. I'm going to mix here. So that you can clearly see what I'm going to do. Just clean up table. So I'm going to add three blocks of stencil of Paris. This is what the stencil of Paris looks like. What a price. So I'm going to add three blocks of stencil of Paris on here. Let's do it like that, Danny. Then you feel better. <laughs> and then I'm also going to add three colors to my paste. So I'm just not too much paint. Okay, so you don't want to add too much paint. I'm adding holiday coral to the first one. So I've just dipped my paint scrape a half a centimeter in my paint. Nothing is dripping. That little amount of paint really colors your, discolors your paste. And I'm mixing my first block with some holiday coral. Clean my scraper. Then I'm mixing James Jade in my second block of stencil of Paris paste. This paste sits rock hard. Also, make sure not to work in direct sunlight because the heat and sudden change of temperature will um, make little hairline cracks appear on your stencil of Paris surface. To fix that, you reapply your stencil in a very cool climate, so late in the afternoon where there's no fluctuation in temperature. And on those cracks, you just apply another thin coat of the paste. So no direct sunlight due to the fact that it's dry, a sudden change in temperature, Expansion and shrinking will, uh, will um, let hairline cracks appear. And then in the last one, I'm going to mix some ashat. Oh, the plants love choco so much, they just want to grow in there. Now, also bear in mind when the stencil of Paris dries, it dries two to three shades darker. So if you want more color, this is definitely going to be more vibrant once it has dried. 
Make sure it's not too runny so you don't add too much paint, else the paint will leak in underneath your stencil. Look at Choco Paint's beautiful selection of 15 by 15 centimeter. Is this 15 or 20, Danny? 15. 15 by 15 centimeter stencil designs. Look at this paisley. And I think this is exactly what we are going to use here. And more mandala patterns. Lovely for creative items. Request from your nearest stockers. All the designs are also um, visible and viewable on our website. You can secure your stencil, I'm going to show you how, with some masking tape so that it doesn't move while you're busy working. This is what I'm going to do here. And I'll repeat this all the way around, but I will wait for this section to have dried completely before I start applying the next side so that nothing smudges. And then I'm going to start with my Ashat Stencil of Paris. Yeah. I'm going to add some James Jade and Stencil of Paris and there. And I let the two join each other. It's almost like a blending, but with paste. And then I'm going to use almonds of oh, holiday squirrel. Holiday is also a person, he's a lovely gentleman. And let's end off with Ashat here at the top. And this will dry two shades darker, more or less. I just scrape over everything to blend it in nicely while it's still wet. Okay, Danny, I'll remove it from this side so that you can see nicely on the screen. I'm going to remove. And there we have a very colorful garden pot with some texture. So there was a line and our stencil colors on top. We will now allow this to dry completely, as I've mentioned, before we continue right around. And then I'll also seal it with a clear glaze once it has dried completely, just to add extra protection. Okay, this in water. How do I wash my stencils? In water immediately. And the same with the paint brushes. You don't need chemicals. All Chocos products are water-based, eco-friendly, non-toxic. So just wash it in water immediately. If you're going to let that brushes, brushes dry, it will dry hard and then you will need a chemical like thinners to clean it. Okay, so there is some inspiration on a flower pot. The next piece of inspiration I'm going to share is with the antique brown glaze. So you know now how to apply the stencil of Paris paste. Okay, so it's with the paint scraper. You don't need to add paint colors to it. This was a creative inspiration idea I shared. You can just use it white and then it will be white. And then you can wait until it's dry. You can paint over it. And as I've done with this pot, you sand over the stencil of Paris once it has dry. And then it will have, it will reveal some of the white and it will be a raised textured pattern surface. Just make sure when working on flower pots that you select a stencil design that is very, um, all the detail pieces are secured. It doesn't have a lot of loose ends. So you need to be careful with your stencil design selection. When you do on flower pots, something that is straight is easier to use with a stencil of Paris as I've demonstrated there. Next, I have a flower pot that um, Suzuki painted for me in Don's wash earlier today. So what we've done here, we didn't flake, we didn't give off any dust. So we just used lacquer thinners, power fixes lacquer thinners. We cleaned it well. We allowed 40 minutes drying time and then we painted it 
with dog's wash. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how I can change the look that these, these crevices, can you see there are crevices on here? So it's not a flat surface. And this is why I'm going to show you how to use the antique brown glaze on surfaces with crevices. The application of the antique brown glaze on flat surfaces and is different. Okay, so let's mix and start being creative. So the antique brown glaze looks like this. It is a sealant. So it's a pure acrylic and latex sealant with colorant in it that we uh, mix at the factory, but it's also in concentrated form. We do not add water at the factory due to the fact that water will contaminate your products over time. What I do is I use cool down boiling water. The instructions are on the left. So it says add 30% water. Um, we are at the factory and we're not actually ever baking here. Okay, we are making here. So I don't have measuring cups or spoons, but to explain this, you take three measuring spoons, say 15 or 30 milliliter, three of them after you've mixed it well, and then one spoon filled with cool down boiling water. And if you want to keep that for later use, you put it in an airtight container and you use it again. The reason for the cool down boiling water is actually that it doesn't contaminate your product that fast. So I am going to really need not too much. Just trust me on this. I am I mixing. But this is also the fun thing about Jorko. The fact that there aren't any rules. The two most important rules with Jorko is make sure your surface is grease free, oil free, dust free by cleaning it with lacquer thinners. And then before you glaze, allow a four hour, at least four hour curing time for your paint. I usually like to leave it overnight and only glaze the next day. Those are the only two rules. The rest, you break. Okay. You experiment and you have fun. Then my secret ingredient to my antique brown glaze is some matte black or sheriff stone chocolate paint and the same amount as the water that you've just added. So just a spoonful. Okay, so one part matte black or sheer of stone. The reason for this is the paint my clear. <laughs> the paint prolongs the drying time, so it gives you more time to play and um, before it dries. Of course the antique lace does dry quickly but I'm going to show you how to work with it. So I've also now changed the colour, so it's more of a greyish brownish look, which I just love. Now, very important tip, whenever we do paint techniques, your greatest friend is a damp cloth. I'm using mutton cloth for this. Mutton cloth, M-U-T-T-O-N. -T -T I dip it in water play around with to make sure it's nice and damp. The more damp, the better. I squeeze out the excess moisture. I fold it like a ball, very flat in my hand palm. So I press it flat with my free hand. Just going to put the water down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, sorry, I'm just turning it like this for the sake of the filming. I make sure my cloth of my brush is not too wet, especially when working when it's standing up, then it will start running down. So your brush is not too wet. I paint small sections at a time. Because it dries quickly. So make sure you work in shade. I take my damp cloth and I start wiping away. 
So what will happen, there will be darker shades in the crevices. It's a very light pressure, else you will just remove everything. I will still add a solid coat of clear glaze after this, because I've actually removed quite a lot of the antique glaze, but this is to get effect. And this will go lovely with the black that I've painted previously, so that all the pots talk to each other. And continue, small sections at a time. Gently, my brush is not too wet. I'm turning it to a cleaner side, again like a ball. Very light movements. I'm working gently, patiently. I'm handling the spot with love and care. It is therapy. I promise you, I have a jam-packed day, but at this moment, I'm thinking of nothing else. So the more you remove, the, the more different it starts looking, but you stop when you are happy and if you want to add something afterwards, if you want to add more antique glaze, you do it. I just want to show you how versatile chocolate is. So I'm just going to continue here. Um, I think it's actually for my own, for my own sanity's sake that I just want to continue. So we do want to show you something. So I'm going to allow that side to dry while I'm continuing here. So all the products are water-based. So if you, at a point, want to change something, you might feel the next day, oh, this spot needs a little color. Or, oh, I have created a streakiness that I want to hide. Due to the fact that everything is water-based, you can continue on top of the glaze with your normal chocolate paint again. You are never restricted to carry on and change something. And um, that's one of the reasons why I find it so enjoyable. So let me put it up. So from that plain pot, we have now created some detail, some shadows. Okay, if you feel this pot needs some color, I'm going to take my damp cloth. Two fingers full of James Jade. The only tip is actually that you want to evenly rub the color on your damp cloth, that there's not a blob of paint sitting on your cloth. So it's a dirty cloth, can you see? And once the glaze has dried, just give it 20 minutes, you can, and I didn't allow now 20 minutes, but you can gently wipe with your color on top of what you've just created. Or if you want to hide any imperfections, you use the first color that you painted the pot with. We used Don's wash. And you wipe exactly as I'm doing now. And now my pot has got some color. It has a neutral tone. It has some shadows. And it is stunning. I love it. Danny? I love it. Oh, that's so lucky. Danny, also, I like the yellow that far. In Portuguese, in video, kiss mark. No. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so once that is done, okay, so all the creative ideas I've shared now for today, there are still so many, but this is a foundation for you to start experimenting and have fun. We will glaze our pots, and I'm going to continue to return to that Ascha point from previously. So, how do we glaze? Let me show. So for the glaze, you still mix three parts glaze. So if you have a 20 or 30 millimeter um, measuring spoon or a cup, pots can be bigger. So maybe you need a 40 milliliter measuring cup. You will add one, two, three parts glaze. There goes my one, two, three parts glaze. And then 
you are adding one part, one cup water. That's fine. So, when working on very dark colors, like matte black, Danny Stair, um, true blue, even maybe share of stone, you can mix equal quantity glaze, equal quantity water. It's a pure acrylic sealant, so it's a concentrated sealant, okay? And then just apply four coats of your glaze on your pots instead of three, as we are going to do. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, to apply the glaze, we use a damp cloth, if I have any left. Let's quickly cut one. I recently discovered the wonderful use of a microfiber cloth when you glaze. I just don't have any at the factory. But you all know what a microfiber cloth is. So you'll just do the exact same steps with a microfiber cloth. And then what I do is I rinse it out with water after I've used it and reuse it for my glaze application, applications. It remains soft. Okay. You can wear gloves, especially when glazing something big like flower pots. Um, wear gloves, else we are going to see the questions. How do I clean myself? And the tip is water, wine, and a hot bath to clean yourself. But wear gloves, it is going to make your own cleaning process easier or wash your hands immediately after you've used it. I'm dipping my damp cloth that I've just dampened with water completely in my glaze and water mix to make sure it absorbs the glaze and water mix everywhere on my cloth. That there's not one part of my cloth that hasn't um, absorbed the mixture. And then I squeeze out to remove any excess. Cool down boiling water, you put it back in your jar and you reuse it. You can, I'm doing it all the time. So my cloth is more damp than dry, okay? So it's rather wet, but not soaking wet. I work in a well lit space and I wipe my glaze onto my pot so that I see that all the areas, all the edges, all the detail, on the top, my cloth feels too dry, so I'm dipping it more. On the top, and even the inside, has received a glaze coat. So it gives a subtle satin finish, but it also makes your surface water and UV resistant. I will do this to my entire pot. There, I've done it. I'll wait half an hour. I'll apply another coat, wipe it. You can use a bigger cloth if it's a bigger pot, but just make sure you evenly wipe it on. The moment your cloth feels dry, dip it again, remove excess and wipe again nicely, evenly. And then another half an hour at your third coat and remember to do the top and the inside section okay i hope everything makes sense i hope i see the most beautiful garden and flower pots the next in the next few weeks be creative outside i can't wait to see your plants growing and stay safe bye